pretty tough. How did you feel up there? I don't, I don't know. All mixed up in my, in my head. I just, just, just sort of lost control. You say you've never been like this before? Ne never before. Smoke, Bill Brown's anxiety reaction is fairly severe and is characterized by tremor and manifestations of panic. Take it easy. You're all right, you don't have to worry now. You're safe here. You get something to make you sleep tonight. Then tomorrow you'll go back to another hospital for a while and get a good rest. Kelly. Bill Brown has had it tough, but with time and care, his basically sound personality will reassert itself. In a second case, the anxiety symptoms are milder. Tell me, soldier, what's your trouble? Well, sir, up on the line, we got into pretty heavy shelling. A couple of my men were killed. Then another shell came in, broke my rifle picked me up and threw me off a ways. Yes. Go ahead. I, I guess I ran. Must have. We had 150 yards ahead of the company. Then what happened? When I came to, the uh, lieutenant was shaking me. I, I was crying. Don't remember much after that. How do you feel now? Uh, shaky inside now. What do you mean? I can't, can't exactly explain it. Feel it more inside than I, than I do outside. A kind of boiling feeling. How long have you been in combat? Nine months now, sir. You've been wounded? Once. How did you feel after you were wounded? Before I was wounded, I, I wasn't jumpy. After that, I was very jumpy. Guess I haven't got it anymore. The way I used to. You've had a common experience. Nothing to worry about. Your nerves are on edge. You're frightened. We'll see that you get a chance to clean up, get some hot chow and rest. Here, reassurance is essential. The patient must understand that his case is not unusual and that it is nothing to be ashamed of. He's told that he will recover soon and completely. That's all. Thank you, sir. In the division area, the patient rests and relaxes under the supervision of experienced medical personnel. Here, sleep and plentiful regular meals exercise their beneficial effect. Relaxation and a return to normal social relationships promote a general sense of well-being. After a few days, the patient is interviewed again. Let's see. You've been here three days now. How do you feel? Pretty good. I've calmed down a little bit. Feel a little bit better. I had a fairly good sleep last night. Have any medicine to make you sleep? No, sir. Slept well without it? Yes, sir. How do you feel about going back to your unit again? Think you could do a job? Well, sir, I think I can. Good. You'll be ready for that in four or five days. I'm sending you to our retraining unit. We'll get some marches, exercise, and work out with your equipment. Sound OK? Yes, sir. What you've had was like a safety valve, a way of letting off steam. Everybody has it. Anything else? No, sir. Those patients that show a speedy and definite improvement are moved to an adjacent area. Here they receive a short course of exercise and combat training. Then they're ready to rejoin their units in the field. 
About 40% of all combat neuropsychiatric casualties were returned to full duty after short-term treatment near the front lines. But what of the remaining patients who are more seriously sick? The further disposition of these cases is decided by the examining psychiatrist. What's your trouble? Go ahead, you can tell me. Can't stand seeing people getting killed. I can't hear you. Can't stand seeing people killed. Where did you see people killed? Um, from... What happened up there? Men... forward slope. Germans started shelling. We were trapped. Couldn't get out. Go on, what happened? I was lucky. I hit under the bridge. Started shelling again. I went crazy. Started running. How do you feel about that? Leaving your buddies? Should have been stockade. How do you feel right now? All right. Nothing wrong with me. What were you afraid of? Everything. What in particular? What in particular? Dead. Dead what? Dead people. I can't hear you. I can't stand seeing dead people. What does that do to you? It me. Well, dead people can't hurt you. But I've been telling myself for years that I can't stand to look at it. Carpal, I'm going to send you back to another hospital where you can get some rest and treatment. In a couple of days, you'll begin feeling better. How does that sound to you? Anything would come back. Up there. Now look, you're going to be all right when you get back. In to addition the other to house. severe anxiety, the patient is deeply depressed. His speech and reactions are retarded, and he has a characteristic feeling of guilt. He will require more extensive observation and treatment in a psychiatric installation farther behind the fighting front. Often, a seasoned soldier reaches the breaking point after many months of duty. What happened? Well, I've been going quite a long time without any trouble. But now the shelling gets me. How long have you been in the Army? 34 months. How much combat? I went through Africa, Baltuno, and Sio, up to there. Ever lose any combat time? No, sir. Mm -hmm. You've had about 320 days, then? Yes, sir. How long have you been a staff sergeant? I think about four months. Have you done a good job at it? Yes, sir. Until now. I'm no good now. What do you think's wrong with you now? Sir? I feel I've gone about as far as I can go. Feel I've taken about enough. Do you think you're sick? No, sir, but just no good anymore. Can't stand shelling. Last time up there, broke down. What do you mean, broke down? Didn't know which way to turn. Ever had this trouble before? No, sir. 
How do you feel about leaving your men? Well, I feel pretty bad about it. But I'm no good to them anymore. I can't leave them. I might get them killed or get them wounded. Just no good. This is a typical example of chronic anxiety, sometimes called the old sergeant syndrome. Along with other severe casualties, he is sent to installations in the army zone where additional facilities are available for prolonged psychiatric treatment. In the Army Zone, a larger staff of psychiatrists is maintained to afford individual attention to each patient. The veteran sergeant is again interviewed. I've been overseas about 30 months. Just how did the shells affect you, sergeant? Well, they affected me pretty bad. It seems I've gone as far as I can and cracked up. Well, how do you feel now? As long as I'm not under fire, okay. Sergeant, uh, how do you think you'd work out on another job? Uh, say a depot. Can you do that? I think so, sir. Reassignment and is necessary for many of these cases. However, return to combat is often possible after further treatment. Here is Bill Brown after three weeks. Well, you've come around nicely, Bill. I thought you would. Well, I didn't. Oh, well, not for a time, anyway. By the way, you ever hear from any of the men in your old outfit? Well, no mail. But uh, well, a couple of the fellas did stop in to see me. Bill, how was it seeing those fellas again? Did it make you feel that you wanted to get back with them? It's a tough question. Well, you know, after what happened. I, I really don't want to go back. But well, I think it's what I ought to do. You feel you'd be all right on full duty? Took a lot to knock me out the first time. I guess I'll do as well as the next man. Bill Brown's recovery is not unusual. Although the number of cases returned to combat decreases sharply as treatment is more removed from the front lines. But more severe cases require Why intensive don't? forms of therapy. Just relax. Take it easy and do what I tell you. Here is an amnesia case who has forgotten everything that happened since he was blown out of his foxhole. This won't hurt you. Come slowly now. One, two, three. The injection of a sedative allows the patient three, to relive two. his battle experiences and with the doctor's three, help, Go on. face them again. Three, three. you're on the battlefield. The shells are coming in. What's that shell? <whistles> Duck! Get in the hole. The shells are bursting all around. Where are you? Where are you? In the hole. My buddy's dead. What happens now? Take the ridge. The Germans surrender. They throw their guns away, ask for cigarettes. They want to look at our knives, say, comrades, comrades, help. They shoot my best buddy. Watch the shells. 
Get me out of here. Tom. Tom. I'm here. What happened after you captured the ridge? You'll be all right. You're safe now. Safe now. Wake up. Wake up now. You were in a lot of trouble. You're better now. Shells didn't hurt you. This you treatment, when employed Nothing early, reduces the danger of chronic neurosis. Although not a magic cure-all, it often produces dramatic results with the acute neuroses resulting from the stress of battle. The retarded patient in later interviews is still depressed and anxious, but his depression and feelings of guilt have lifted enough so that he is better able to respond to the interviewer. What sort of a person were you as a child? Wasn't sick much. Had a inferiority complex, pretty bad. Just what do you mean? Well, when I was a child, I didn't think I was as good as anybody else. Did you go in for sports and play with other children? Oh no, sir. I was a trouble. I, I couldn't make any friends. How did you react as a child to dead people? Oh, I, I couldn't look at them. How did they make you feel? I couldn't stand anything bad. Did you ever get into a fight? Oh, no, sir. I, I never cared for fights. I saw a man killed once. Street fight. Head hit the curb. Just lay there. They covered him up. Oh, I was scared. I was scared to tell my parents. I had nightmares about it for years. How old were you then? About six. Did anything like that ever happen again? Not until I got into combat. What do you think is wrong with you? Oh, uh, I don't know, sir. Everything seems kind of hopeless. Well, it's not as bad as you think. I've seen a lot of people with the same thing. It'll take time, but you're going to be all right. This patient will need extended treatment at a hospital in the communication zone, or if necessary, in the zone of interior. Thus, he completes the chain of evacuation which started in the combat area. From the front lines, the neuropsychiatric casualties were sent to nearby clearing stations for screening and treatment. Here, approximately 40% of all neuropsychiatric casualties were returned to full duty. The remaining patients were evacuated to army installations where intensive treatment salvaged an additional 20%. A large number were reassigned to limited service. More serious cases were then sent back to the communication zone level. At this level, only one to two percent were returned to combat. Patients reassigned bring the total from base and army level to nearly 30 percent. Approximately 10 percent of the original neuropsychiatric patients are evacuated to the continental United States. This system of neuropsychiatric treatment afforded early and intensive care. 
It returned a large proportion of soldiers to combat and salvaged many for useful reassignment. But for the more serious cases, the next step is evacuation and the long voyage home. Back home, the patients that don't need hospital care are sent to convalescent hospitals, where both combat and non-combat cases lead a normal barracks life under the supervision of specially trained personnel. The battalion commanders are medical officers. Severe cases, both combat and non-combat, are treated at the general hospitals, some of which are devoted exclusively to the care of neuropsychiatric patients. Here, all techniques of psychotherapy are employed. Individual psychotherapy, the personal contact between patient and psychiatrist, is the basic element of all treatment. Well, you're coming along nicely, Corporal. I want you to stay in the hospital for a while longer, though. I want to be sure that you're in really good shape before you leave. Okay, sir. I sure do feel better than when I first got here. And I want to get Explanation back... Explanation and reassurance based upon an understanding of each individual's emotional conflict contribute fundamentally to the patient's recovery. Sometimes an emotional disturbance shows itself as a physical ailment. Here, an inner emotional distress has been converted into a form of paralysis. In this type of case, treatment under narcosis may yield extraordinary results. Here again, a sedative is employed. Under the influence of the drug, the patient's mind becomes more open and receptive. While the patient is in this highly approachable state, the doctor employs the power of suggestion to pave the road toward recovery. Now you're going to get right up and walk. Come on now, sit up. Now get off the bed. Put your feet right down on the floor. That's fine. All right, now stand up. Isn't that good? All right, now walk out there. Walk right over to the ward, man, all by yourself. Go ahead, you're doing fine. All right, now turn around and come back to me. Come on now. Now I'm going to let you go back to sleep, and when you wake up, you're going to keep right on walking. How about it? Thanks a lot, Doc. I know. A technique which is basically similar, hypnosis, is effective in treatment of amnesia. This man doesn't even remember his own name. A shell burst in Okinawa wiped out his memory. The experience was unendurable to his conscious mind, which rejected it and along with it his entire past. But the unconscious memories remain. Through hypnotic suggestion, the psychiatrist will attempt to uncover them. You can remember everything. You can remember everything. You're back in Okinawa. Tell me what you see. Tell me. Speak. Battery area. You're in the battery area. Go on. Tell me what's going on. Jap artillery. Getting our position. Jap's getting your position. Go on. Oh, the boys got hit. They're taking it away. Yes, yes. Go on. Oh, it's my gun position. Yes, you can remember it now. Tell me. It's all right now. You can tell me. You can tell me. Yes, you remember an explosion now. Go on. K 
carry me across the field. Across the field. Go on. You're putting me on a stretch. Yes, yes. All right, go on. Mr. Throw. Mr. Throwing shells. Go on. You can see everything clearly now. I'm in a truck. Why are you fearful now? I don't want any more. You don't want any more? No. no. You want to forget it, but you're going to remember it because it's gone now. It's gone. You're back here now. You're away from Okinawa. You have forgotten it, but you remember who you are now. Who are you? Bates. That's right. Pull in now. Donald Bates. Donald Bates. That's right. Now your mother's name. Margaret. Father's name. Thomas. That's fine. You know who they all are now. All right. You're coming back with us now. But this is going to stay with you. You're going to remember it all. You're going to remember about Okinawa. You're going to remember about the shells and the bombs out there. They won't hurt you now. You're at ease and relaxed. No fear, no anxiety. When I wake you, you'll be comfortable, relaxed. No aches, no pains, but you'll remember everything I've told you, all that you've remembered. Under the guidance of the psychiatrist, he is able to regard his experience in its true perspective as a thing of the past which no longer threatens his safety. You can wake now. Well, how are you? Pretty good. Now he can remember. At the General Hospital, all facilities are available for the most advanced treatment. Electroshock therapy is remarkably effective with certain acute psychoses. The continuous tub treatment is also an effective method of sedation for severely disturbed cases. The patient relaxes under constant observation in a scientifically regulated bath. The wet pack treatment has a similar soothing effect. Individual treatment is supplemented by group activities. Particularly important is group psychotherapy. Let's think of it a little bit like this. We want to get you out of your feeling of isolation. Therefore, it is important that you learn to understand something of the basic cause of your distress. That you learn to understand... The patients are given some information as to the cause of their condition and under skilled direction, discuss their difficulties, helping each other to overcome the false sense of shame that often accompanies mental and nervous disorders. Your inner conflicts are, with variations, common to all men. Many of these conflicts start way back in early childhood. No doubt you men will find it easy to recall things that disturb your feeling of security in childhood. Fears, hatreds, jealousies, and so on. Let's see if you can give some illustrations of this kind. If I did anything wrong that I was ashamed of, I was always ashamed to go and tell my parents what I'd done. Oh, well, that's about how I felt, too. I, I kept it to myself if I did anything wrong, and I... I know I used to be in a constant fear that my parents would find out what I was doing. Well, you both did about the same thing. In other words, you both used the same method to get relief from anxiety. In the occupational therapy shop, art and craft work establish a new confidence through the satisfaction of a job well done. Some patients try their hands at specialized vocational skills in which future employment offers a strong incentive. Supervised exercise affords a feeling of health and physical well-being.
The give and take of competitive sports rebuilds confidence in badly shaken personalities. As a cooperative member of a group, the patient soon begins to feel at home again. Entertainment and social activities are vital steps in the patient's readjustment to normalcy. And throughout, there is the continued individualized contact between doctor and patient. Oh, hello there. Come in. I was hoping you'd drop in. Sit down. Thank you, sir. I hear you're going to leave today. That's right. I just stopped by to see you before it was time to go. Good. I'm glad you did. How are you feeling? Glad to get away? Well, you know how it is. I've been waiting for this for a long time. This is a pretty big day in my life. Of course it is. I hate to see my prized patients leaving, but what can I do? Well, goodbye. And Best of luck to you. So long, Captain. And thanks. Summary and discharge note on... The patient leaving the hospital after long treatment is an end product of the Army's neuropsychiatric program. This program deals with complex and difficult problems, which have their beginning where the Army begins, in the induction center. At this early stage, the first preventive step is taken to protect the individual as well as the army. Careful screening assures that only the healthiest of our civilians enter the service. The preventive approach is implemented by an educational program in mental hygiene. Emphasis is placed on those facts which build and sustain the morale of army personnel. When psychiatric breakdowns threaten or do occur, Understanding and cooperation, plus immediate recognition of early symptoms, followed by prompt treatment, promote a rapid return to health. Until proven otherwise, even the most serious cases are regarded as salvageable. All these elements combine to make the most of the human resources that are the backbone of any army. An army is no stronger than the population from which it is drawn. To keep America strong, we must strive to improve the physical and mental health of the whole nation through a deeper understanding of those factors which darken or lighten the all-important shades of gray. are on edge, you're frightened. We'll see that you get a chance to clean up, get some hot chow and rest. Here, give you some reassurance is essential. The patient must understand that his case is not unusual and that it is nothing to be ashamed of. He's told that he will recover soon and completely. That's all. Thank you, sir. In the division area, the patient rests and relaxes under the supervision of experienced medical personnel. Here, sleep and plentiful regular meals exercise their beneficial effect. Relaxation and a... A couple of my men were killed. Then another shell came in, broke my rifle. Picked me up and threw me off a ways. Yes. Go ahead. I, I guess I ran. Must have. Get 150 yards ahead of the company. Then what happened? When I came to, the uh, lieutenant was shaking me. I, I was crying. 
Don't remember much after that. How do you feel now? Uh, shaky inside. Pretty tough. How did you feel up there? I don't, I don't know. All mixed up in my, in my head. I just sort of lost control. You say you've never been like this before? Ne never before. Smoke. Bill Brown's anxiety reaction is fairly severe and is characterized by tremor and manifestations of panic. Take it easy. You're all right. You don't have to worry now. You're safe here. You get something to make you sleep tonight. Then tomorrow you'll go back to another hospital for a while and get a good rest. Kelly. Yes, sir. Bill Brown has had it tough, but with time and care, his basically sound personality will reassert itself. In a second case, the anxiety symptoms are milder. Tell me, soldier, what's your trouble? Well, sir, up on the line, we got into pretty heavy shelling now. What do you mean? I can't, can't exactly explain it. Feel it more inside than I, than I do outside. A kind of boiling feeling. How long have you been in combat? Nine months now, sir. You've been wounded? Once. How did you feel after you were wounded? Before I was wounded, I, I wasn't jumpy. After that, I was very jumpy. Guess I haven't got it anymore. Where I used to. You've had a common experience. Nothing to worry about. <laughs>